So some of us need to have a talk, specifically the several hundred people who it's, it's not, is it, it's, I guess it's kind of news, but not really. This isn't the Philip DeFranco show from 10 years ago. I mean, the news is essentially the internet is horny. So Resident Evil Village, it's a game that's coming out. And a lot of people have taken, let's, let's call it a liking uh, to this lady, Lady Dimitrescu, with a general reaction from the internet being, I want her to sit on me. And then seemingly that was just gonna be the whole situation. But then the official Resident Evil Twitter account was like, okay, I know what we gotta do. Let them know specifically, if you include her hat and high heels, she's 2.9 meters, approximately nine foot six tall. Information that one, apparently resulted in several hundred of you adding me and emailing me. And two, information that made YouTube's own Markiplier horny on the main. Now I won't shame you for it, but if you keep it up, I'm gonna have to bonk you, unless you're into that. <laughs> Here's the show. And the first things we're gonna touch on today, we have entertainment slash entertainer news, starting with TikTok. So there's this popular silhouette challenge on TikTok that has created a lot of controversy. Essentially, it's a trend where people, primarily women, are sort of kind of standing around in normal clothes and lighting, and then they strike a pose and add a filter that creates a red light around them, essentially turning their body into a black silhouette. And often, when they do the silhouette, they take off some or maybe even all of their clothes, so there's more curves to the silhouette. And the people taking part range from everyday women to celebrities like Lizzo, Tiffany Haddish, and large creators like Lauren Gray. But now you have a lot of people trying to urge others to not participate in this challenge, or at least be careful when they do so. And this, because anyone that's ever dabbled with photo or editing software knows you can change the lighting and contrast of these videos. And doing so in a way here that pretty much removes or severely decreases the silhouette, meaning that people can actually see the body. In fact, right now on YouTube, there are how-tos that have thousands or even hundreds of thousands of views on how to do this. There was also a subreddit for this called Silhouette Unfiltered, but that has been banned for violating Reddit's rules against involuntary pornography. So, you know, do what you want with your body, but be careful because there's a lot of people involuntarily uh, showing more than they expected. Which actually kind of on that note, another piece of TikTok news, uh, we had Chloe Bailey in the news. She's a 22 year old singer. She took part in a challenge that I'm sure no men watching this are familiar with called the Buss It Challenge. And actually it's another one of these challenges where you go from kind of wearing big baggy stuff to, to kind of, uh, let's just say not. And when Chloe did it, it could be argued she killed it. It was done, the trend was over at that point. Why even try? I would show the video to you right now, but one, it might be against YouTube's terms of service, and two, your head might explode. I don't want your blood on my hands. But, you know, like when any grown ass woman decides to do something with their body, uh, in addition to the praise, in addition to the weird comments, uh, she also got shame. In fact, she ended up getting a number of comments criticizing her for being what they said was too sexy in her busted challenge and in other videos and photos that she posted on Instagram, which is a stupid argument in my opinion. Uh, as we've already established, she's a grown ass woman doing her own grown ass thing. And, you know, following this, part of the story became that you had other women like Gabrielle Union standing up for Chloe Bailey, telling her to keep shining. But I think in general, maybe the, the lesson of this story is unless someone's hurting, maybe we should all try to mind our own damn business more. Like, there's so much real shit going on in the world. Are we, are we really gonna lose our mind over a 22 year old doing something with her body that really hurts nobody? I get that a part of the population of the planet in this country, like they feel victimized when someone just feels comfortable in their own skin and they do something that doesn't affect them in any way. But maybe, I don't know, take a moment for self-reflection and let's just move past it. And then let's talk about business slash financial news because we had Robin Hood back in the news, which just a quick note, as I mentioned last Thursday, Robin Hood's no longer getting sponsorships on my show. I'm moving my money. As I mentioned yesterday, I am now sponsored by Public and have an affiliate link, publicfill.com. If you wanna move along with me or sign up for the first time, it's a win-win. I get paid because they know I sent you and you get some free stock. And two, I'll figure out a faster way to mention that anytime I talk about Robin Hood, which based on this news, there, there may be multiple times in the coming weeks. A, for transparency reasons at this point, have, I have a, an anti-Robin Hood bias. Uh, and B, I don't wanna in, inadvertently uh, support and push an app that I don't even trust with my money. But that said, Robin Hood is in the news. They have a few, at least a few, uh, rough weeks ahead of them. With one of those reasons being Vlad Tenev, co-CEO of Robinhood, is now expected to testify before the House Financial Services Committee on February 18th. With this news coming as committees in both the House and the Senate have announced investigations into Robinhood's decision last Thursday to cut off users from buying new shares of GameStop while also still allowing old shares to be sold, which notably was a move that appeared to heavily favor Wall Street hedge funds over everyday investors. And as such, both chambers of Congress will be focusing their probes on whether or not those hedge funds played a role in Robinhood's decision, though 
Uh, Tenev, for his part, has denied that claim. Instead, saying that decision was because the surge on GameStop stock resulted in an initial $3 billion bill from clearinghouses, saying that Robinhood only had $2 billion available at that time. But that explanation has fallen short for a ton of people, given Robinhood's initial reasoning as far as why they were doing this, the god-awful communication, which is also why Robinhood is now facing dozens of lawsuits. Among those suits, you have one man alleging the Robinhood blocked retailer investors for no legitimate reason, notably adding that the app failed to provide provide adequate explanation about pulling a profitable stock from its platform and knowingly put their customers at a disadvantage compared to customers who used other trading apps. That man, along with many of the other people filing these suits, are asking the courts to force Robinhood to fully reinstate access to GameStop stock, as well as paying financial damages to any Robinhood users who were unable to execute GameStop stock trades. We've also seen people taking out their anger on Robinhood by rating their app one star in app stores. Initially, uh, we saw Google coming to the rescue by deleting 100,000 negative reviews. However, uh, the app's rating has been falling down again, and this time Google says that it will not be removing those reviews. But also, with all of this, I do want to say, I know that I've said it on Twitter in, in one way, I don't know if I've said it in a show, I do believe that there needs to be a conversation regarding influencers and the stock market. Right, and I think there is a question of where is the line as far as the responsibility of someone saying, hey, I'm putting my money in this, I'm here for the ride, it's kind of fun, and the number of influencers that have their money in certain things, and they're like, insert blank is going to the moon, and then once their followers and, and what they've helped kind of create as far as a wave uh, has, has really gotten big, they just sell off, right? Because then you're just talking about a, a manipulative pump and dump. And then someone that's not you, often someone in a far less privileged position is left holding that bill. Like how many people that were like, hey, put your money in GameStonk when it was $450, got out before it's, you know, it's at a hundred now. Like, I'm not trying to villainize any specific people. I just think there needs to be a conversation around the responsibility because obviously if other people are investing in the stock market, they are other grown ass people, but you know, our words matter. And it, it's just something that, especially over the last two weeks that it's it just gotten stuck in my head. Then in quick news that just broke as I was uploading and we'll be talking about later, it is being reported that Jeff Bezos will be stepping down as the CEO of Amazon. And as far as what comes next, for Bezos, some reports are saying that he will be transitioning to an executive chair role, while others have said that he will be dedicating his time to defeating Superman. And then let's take a second to pay some bills and thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Stereo. And Stereo, if you don't know, is a new live broadcast platform that I've been trying out the past week. I mean, I actually went live with my wife, Lindsay, yesterday. We answered a bunch of your questions like. Hey, how do you settle a fight between both of you? Just curious. <laughs> because of course, that's what you would ask. But it was great to hear from you beautiful bastards. Uh, you sent in some good questions. We tested it at first with the text line. I also just kind of like the live nature of, of doing a Q&A like this or having a back and forth and then the audience being able to chime in because you never really know what to expect. It's a lot of fun. And if you missed yesterday's live, you want to check it out, you can listen to it right now on my profile on stereo, link down below. And you can actually catch me live again with my dad on Wednesday and my EP, Amanda, on Friday. But yeah, all you gotta do is go to stereo.com slash Franco, download the app, Follow me there uh, and get those questions ready to submit for the next live chat. Then let's talk U.S. politics because the Biden executive orders have continued. In fact, uh, Biden signing three executive orders today focused on immigration. The first and arguably most significant one will revoke Trump's executive order that sought to justify separating children from their parents and create a task force aimed at reuniting families that have been separated. Though this will likely be a tough job because as we've talked about in the past, there is a lack of records. According to court documents, around 5,500 children have been identified as having been been separated from their families under Trump, including about 600 whose parents have not yet been found. Then you have the second order that will outline a multi-step process to manage the migration of asylum seekers at the southern border and roll back what it called the most damaging policies adopted by the prior administration. Among other things, this includes addressing the underlying issues that cause migrants to seek asylum, providing asylum seekers access to legal avenues in the United States, and taking other broad actions to restore America's asylum system by both rescinding and reviewing numerous Trump administration policies. This, including reviewing the Migrant Protection Protocols Program, otherwise known as Remain in Mexico, which forced asylum seekers to stay in often dangerous and unsafe places while awaiting their asylum hearings. And then you have the third order, which requires agencies to do what they call a top to bottom review of recent regulations, policies, and guidance that have set up barriers to our legal immigration system. Notably here, that will also include a review of Trump's public charge rule, which prevented immigrants from getting green cards if they used or were likely to use government benefits, such as subsidized housing. And so if you haven't been keeping count with these three new orders under 
under his belt, Biden will have implemented nine executive actions just on immigration in his first two weeks. And while yes, these actions all fulfill campaign promises Biden made to reverse Trump's immigration agenda, you also have many activists and advocates expressing concerns that the steps that he has taken so far will not provide enough immediate action. But also at the same time, experts have said that this exemplifies the difficulties that Biden faces in unraveling the tons and tons of individual policies that Trump put into place. And those policies and roadblocks run deep. I mean, just yesterday, it was reported that a whistleblower accused the former acting deputy secretary of Homeland Security of actively seeking to limit Biden's immigration agenda. This by striking a series of last minute agreements with the union for ICE. This including reportedly giving the ICE union unprecedented veto authority in many areas. And so with all that in part is why we saw senior Biden administration officials telling reporters that rather than focusing on just immediate changes, they wanna give relevant agencies time to evaluate how to best undo all these Trump policies. And so this is something that we're gonna to have to keep our eyes on for a while. One, to, to see what the agencies find from these reviews, what's happening there as well, is what continues to happen with immigration, the number of people seeking asylum. Right, so we'll see what develops there. Also, uh, another situation that we're seeing daily developments. You have Marjorie Taylor Greene. For example, in a statement yesterday, we saw Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell deliver a scathing condemnation of Greene. Now, notably, in his statement, McConnell never explicitly named Greene, but he did mention several absolutely insane conspiracy theories that she has openly supported and promoted, which made it clear that he was talking about her. With McConnell saying, loony lies and conspiracy theories are cancer for the Republican Party and our country. Somebody who suggested that perhaps no airplane hit the Pentagon on 9-11, that horrifying school shootings were pre-staged, and that the Clintons crashed JFK Jr.'s airplane is not living in reality. This has nothing to do with the challenges facing American families or the robust debates on substance that can strengthen our party. And whether you like McConnell or not, I personally do not. His remarks are significant here because they mark the first time he has weighed in on the criticisms facing Green. Though, I would also argue it should be incredibly easy because she is a special kind of destructive crazy. Also, just a note, when, when we talk about McConnell doing what appears to be just sane things. Understand this is not part of the Mitch McConnell image redemption tour. No, he's still Mitch McConnell. He may not be Frankenstein to, to Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene's Frankenstein's monster, but he is, let's say, uh, the town sheriff who's like, I, I, I don't, I don't know what the Frankenstein's monster has been doing. Frankenstein's monster tweeted what? I'm sorry, I don't have Twitter. I have a disease that makes it so I don't see things that make what I'm trying to accomplish harder. But back on track, Marjorie Taylor Greene, right? McConnell says these things, which it, it's incredibly horrifying that she has supported and believed these things. Yeah, all of this is being talked about after tons of fairly recent social media posts surfaced last week showing her endorsing calls to execute Democrats and FBI agents, as well as directly posting countless bonkers conspiracy theories, including one where she claimed the California campfire was a vast Jewish conspiracy set by California politicians and PG&E using a secret space laser in order to clear a path for a high-speed rail, which is why one, you probably saw the Jewish space lasers was trending on Twitter last Thursday, and two, I agree with the Sklar brothers that Jewish space lasers would be a fantastic band name. <laughs> I need to get the artists on that, actually. But despite all that, uh, until McConnell's speech, a lot of what has been said has been very soft. Right, we've seen House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy calling Green's comments deeply disturbing, saying that he'll meet with her. But so far, he has reportedly not met with her, but instead given her key committee assignments. Assignments that included the Education Committee, a move that obviously sparked backlash. Are people wondering, how is a woman that doesn't believe in mass school shootings and has been out there harassing people like David Hogg, how is she expected to decide education policy? And so as a result, we saw House Democrats saying yesterday that they would unilaterally advance a measure to strip Green of her committee assignments if McCarthy does not act. Now, Green, for her part, responded to both McConnell's remarks and the Democrats' efforts to remove her from committees in a series of tweets, writing, The real cancer for the Republican Party is weak Republicans who only know how to lose gracefully, with her also seeming to threaten Democrats if they remove her by saying the precedent they set will be used extensively against members on their side once they regain the majority after the 2022 elections. And then, of course, using this whole situation as a way to fundraise. Though, if, if I could say anything to Democrats here, it would be, I don't think Marjorie Taylor Greene needs precedent to do things that, that screw over people that do not support her crazy. Like Marjorie Taylor Greene is what evil scientists made, so by comparison, Donald Trump seems like a sane, rational, functioning adult. But yeah, that is, <laughs> that's where this one ends. Uh. And of course, uh, with this story as well as, hey, if, if any other story stood out, I'd love, of course, to know your thoughts in those comments down below, but that, is where I'm going to end today's show. As always, thanks for being a part of my daily dives in the news, hitting that like button, subscribing, all the good stuff. If you need some more D in your life, I had to do it at least one time. Say it one time. If you need more DeFranco in your life, maybe you missed the last show or something, uh, you can click or tap right there for more me. Oh yeah.
that is where I'm going to end today's show. I love your faces, and thanks for watching news that matters for people that care. I'll see you tomorrow.